Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Mushroom Wonderland. My name is Aaron Hilliard and I'm the Vice President of the local Mycological Society here in Kitsap County, Washington. What I do is I go into the woods and I talk about mushrooms and we discover what kind of wild mushrooms are growing this time of year. And right now it's the end of summer and we're just awaiting the heavy fall rains, but there's still some mushrooms out here growing. So let's discover them and see what uses they have and if they're edible, poisonous, hallucinogenic, whatever they may be, we're gonna discover them today on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. So right here is a really interesting little mushroom. This one's popping up right on the side of the trail and it's quite fuzzy. The term for that is typically tomentos. Um, this whole thing, it kind of looks like a weird little pastry popping out of the ground. This one commonly called the Dyer's polypore or Phaeolus schweinitzii. Um, the scientific name, a little bit more of a mouthful. So you could just call it the Dyer's polypore. And these come out late summer. And these are always growing with a rotting tree. They actually can be parasitic too. So there's a old stump right here and it's really obvious that that's what this is growing with. But you can find them growing at the base of live trees. And if you have one of these growing in your lawn at the base of a live hemlock or a Douglas fir tree, it means that that tree is on the way out. And it's probably a good idea to have it looked at by an arborist and perhaps removed. But this mushroom can be used to dye protein fabrics like wool and silk, boil it with some water and add different mordants. It's quite a science. It's still a cool mushroom and in late summer is usually when I see this guy popping up. So the Phaeolus schweinitzii. I'm not gonna pick this one, it's awfully young and they're really strange looking when they're young. They look like a cinnamon pastry or something like that on the side of the trail. We're gonna leave this one here, but it's still a cool mushroom to encounter here in the very latest part of summer, early autumn. It's really the beginning of September, so not even autumn, just really late summer. Phaeolus schweinitzii or the Dyer's polypore. So that's cool. Here's some mushrooms growing directly off of a log. There's more growing down underneath here. These mushrooms growing off of a log, if I look close, they don't have the gills attached to the stem. It's very obviously that the gills stop before they touch the stipe. This one's got kind of a pinkish hue to these white gills and they're growing right off of wood. These three keys really kind of lead me to the genus Pluteus. So the deer mushroom or the deer shield mushroom, this one, Pluteus cervinus. This one is an edible mushroom. It's called the deer mushroom. Um, maybe because the color looks a lot like a deer hide. Um, it could be because deer eat them. I've heard it's because the color looks like a deer hide, but also really interestingly, if you put uh, one of these gills in a microscope, you'll see the cystidia, which is a cell structure on the edge of the gill, looks a little bit like antlers on a deer. So a few different reasons why these could be called a deer mushroom, but Pluteus cervinus or Pluteus exilis. Exilis is usually a darker cap. The cervinus here, very common, grows on wood. And like I said, it's edible, but not really desired. I don't know anybody who goes out to eat these. But down in the southeast United States, there's actually Pluteus americanus, which is an active species, a hallucinogenic Pluteus that grows out in the woods on dead logs like this. But these ones, not active. And in a pinch, you could definitely eat these. And uh, they're a nice uh, cap and stem mushroom. So it's kind of nice to see a regular looking mushroom out here at the dead end of summer. So right here I have some potassium hydroxide or KOH and this is used in mushroom identification and it's a base. If it gets on your skin, it actually kind of turns into soap. This is a 10% mixture, which is pretty strong. 5% is all you really need. 10% 
anything stronger than that could get caustic, could be dangerous on your skin, but we put a drip of that on this cap. We'll put a little bit on the stem and a little bit on the gill and see if there's any change in color. And this is one way that mycologists can decipher different species because they have different coloration reactions to the KOH sometimes. Um, this one, usually you see a reaction pretty quickly. This one, I'm not really seeing any reaction at all. So no, no reaction to KOH. And uh, if you looked into the literature, you'd probably see that Pluteus cervinus has no reaction to KOH. So, But it's kind of a cool tool to use in mycology and pretty cheap. You can get it on Amazon. I'll put in a link in the description for a bottle of KOH or potassium hydroxide. Right down here, another baby Dyer's polypore, Faola schweinitzii. So, real fuzzy. They're young right now, so just getting going. Um, but they're pretty common and somewhat easy to spot because they look so unusual against the forest floor. But a good time to keep your eye out for these guys. In a couple of weeks, they'll be pretty big and good for picking for dye mushrooms. Look right here growing on this moss. Not exactly a fungus, but interesting nonetheless. And it would look maybe like a fungus to you. This is Fuligo septica or the dog vomit slime mold bizarre creature and this thing will just pop up overnight and grow really fast and then turn into a dark brown powdery spore mass and it can move rather quickly this thing uh, will climb around on this log and grow and shrink and pulsate and if we put a time-lapse photography on here we could definitely see this doing a lot of crazy stuff within the course of one or two days but the uh, dog vomit slime mold I guess it could look like puke it is a slime mold. It's not exactly a fungus. This is in the Myxomycetes, or the Myxos, they call them. So interesting. Lots of different slime molds. If you want to slow down and start looking at logs, it's a whole nother kingdom. Literally, different kingdom in taxonomy. But if you see these growing on your plants or your sidewalk or in your landscape bed or something, totally safe. It's not going to hurt anything of yours. And uh, kind of adds a little color to the landscape. I spotted that one from a long ways off. Beautiful day in the forest, starting to cool down, and fungus responds to that. Not only moisture, but the change in temperature, and the fungi is going to start to come to life here. Our mushroom season here in the Pacific Northwest is typically late September through mid-December um, in the lowlands in western Washington, but we have some mushrooms that go all, all winter long, and so we have pretty mild winters, which we're lucky about that, but... All you people, I've been jealous of your mushrooms down south and on the eastern seaboard. We're about to get our turn here soon, so I'm super excited for that. But right now, mushrooms still pretty scarce because we are only only in the uh, very end of summer. Right there, really old dire polypore. Not gonna use that for anything. How oh, cool. So right here we have another dying mushroom. So in the end of summer, a lot of uh, possibilities for dyers mushrooms. So that's using these to dye fabrics, usually protein fabrics like wool or silk. It just won't stick to the fibers in cotton, but basically you would take this mushroom, put it in water, and uh, boil it with some fabric. This is the Tapanilla atrotomentosa. The tomentose part is because it's a little bit fuzzy and especially on the stem, it has a black velvet-like texture. And so this is commonly called the velvet-footed Pax. Used to be in a genus called Paxillus, but this one is now in Tapanilla. And uh, it's a unique and beautiful mushroom. This one not showing a lot of the velvet foot. And uh, I am gonna pick it. It sure is beautiful and it's growing off of this old stump. It's like a really ancient old growth stump. So uh, this mushroom, not really known to be edible. It's uh, not palatable from what I understand. It's a big prolific spore producer and it's a decayer. So it's chewing up 
this wood and uh, you know helping to decay the the old stumps and logs in the forest so that new trees can grow on it. Pretty common one you can find in the summer in the PNW and a useful one if you like doing arts and crafts. You could join a mycological society or uh, take one of Alyssa Allen's workshops. You can go to mycopigments.com and learn more about what she does and it's a whole thing. It's like a kind of a witchy witchcraft sort of thing and you got cauldrons of boiling fabric and strange mushrooms and stuff. It's really actually pretty fun. So when I pick this guy, let's see what it looks like underneath. This one's oddly growing out of the log. You can barely see some of that velvet foot on it, but beautiful gill structure. Sometimes it has this really cool honeycomb looking pattern right here at the base of the stem. I've taken some really cool pictures of the gill structure here and put them online. But uh, it's a very soft mushroom. Very soft. And I don't think it's toxic. It's just not really known to be a desired edible. But there you go. The velvet footed packs. I'm going to collect this and add it to my Dyer's mushroom collection so I can have a little dyeing workshop one day. We'll make a cool video about how to dye fabric with mushrooms. Hey, so make sure to go over to mushroom-wonderland.com to get merch like this cool sweatshirt. This is the original logo design, but there's some other designs like the cozy cabin, sunshine amanita design. There is the tent in the forest mushroom wonderland design. You can get mugs, you can get shirts and hats and all the stuff that you want to let people know that you have a lot of mush love in you. You can help support the channel. If you like what me and Gunner are doing out here in the forest, please help support Mushroom Wonderland by buying a t-shirt or a sticker, a coffee mug, mushroom-wonderland.com and get yourself some merch. Back to the video, let's go. Right here, more of the velvet footed packs growing off of this old log. See that? Ooh, that one's got much more of a velvet foot. You see that? Very velvety. The Tapanella atrotomentosa. This is the tomentose part. And here's some younger, older ones. But we're gonna, these have sporulated a lot, but we are gonna keep this one to put in our Dyer's mushroom collection. But kind of a handsome mushroom. This one's got a little green mold. That's okay for uh, dyeing. Um, I wouldn't eat something that has green mold on it, but definitely okay to dye some fabric with. Oh, look at that. Very young red-belted conch. So the Fomitopsis mounciae, or the red-belted conch, probably the most common mushroom that you can see with your eye here in the Pacific Northwest. It grows on all the rotting stumps and logs. And this one is a polypore. No, it's not edible. It's way too tough. It'd be like eating wood, but this is a brown rot decayer. And it's breaking down these logs so that they can be used again by uh, other plants and trees to grow in the forest. So without these kind of mushrooms, this would just be logs as high as you can imagine they just wouldn't uh you know they wouldn't break down without the fungus so really important saprobic mushroom that grows here in the northwest it's in a lot of my videos and uh some people use it medicinally or make tea out of it i've heard that but not really known for being used for anything for humans but really really important for ecology the red belted conch fomitopsis mounciae Oh dang, so this is pretty exciting. Look at this. This is a chicken of the woods, just a young baby right now. Latiparis conifericola. So this is our conifer loving chicken of the woods that's fruiting right here in the end of summer. These ones are super duper young and they're pretty near a trail. I wanna see these grow up a little bit more and come check on them in a couple of days. But this one is a brown rot decayer, like the Fomitopsis mounciae. This one's eating all of the cellulose out of the wood. And it should have a pretty impressive flush of mushrooms growing here within the next couple of days. But always exciting to find Latiparis, somewhat uncommon here inland in Western Washington. 
find it out by the coast a lot and in the rainforest at the Ho Rainforest. Uh, other places in the country this mushroom is pretty common, but here not so much. It's a good edible mushroom, very beautiful. It doesn't agree with everybody, so make sure to try a little bit first. And if it agrees with you, then yeah, fry it up. And they call it chicken of the woods because it has a texture a bit like chicken. But always exciting to find a chicken of the woods. And I'm definitely going to be back to check on this one in a couple of days. So it turns out there's not a whole bunch to see growing out here in the Pacific Northwest right now at the end of summer. Um, mushrooms are just going to start growing like crazy. We're starting to get some rains. The temperatures are cooling down, so it's exciting. But for right now, get out there, get your dyer's mushrooms, start a dyeing collection, and one day, maybe on a rainy day, when you're not out mushroom hunting, uh, you can experiment using some wool or silk and uh, learn to dye fabric. So kind of a special episode of dyer's mushrooms, even though I didn't really plan it that way. It's just the way it went. So thanks for joining this episode, and we'll see you on the next one. Much love, everybody. Peace out.